has a wrong letter of flip. Or worked on the track a bit. Yeah. When I get up in the morning and walk through, I look at this. A lot of memories go. A lot of memories. Ron Kelly lives in Howley. He spent 35 years with the railway, working with speeders that carried men and their gear to maintain the tracks and fix the rail bed. I got this speeder, right, and I had it over on Milan for 12 or 13 years. And my, my intention was when I bought it, that's what I was going to do. But I couldn't seem to get no rail nowhere, you know. I didn't know how in the hell I was going to do it. The man who sold him the speeder a dozen years earlier had planned to build his own railway. He had the rails, but he never had enough space. He couldn't use them because his land was too small. Eh? You know, you got to have a certain, there's only so much you can go at a time, they curve it. So he told me to make an offer, so I made an offer, and that's how I come to get this. Eh? And, but then it was night and day then. Well, I'll wake up in the morning, five o'clock, waiting, waiting for daylight to come to get out of there. <laughs> I suppose you can't do it all right away. You gotta have something to continue. Oh yes, if you've done this all, you know, you you, you wouldn't you know, there's nothing to wake up for in the morning, eh? Because it's always a little project, eh? And not only that, it gets clear of the boys. Because you got more projects home than up there. <laughs> that I get clear of that, eh? <laughs> yeah. And you know, just in the morning you open that door and look at and look at that, you know, something flows through you, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Dreams about it. I've been I've been farmed now a thousand times at this day. Eh? I wake up there and, and after farming, I wake up in the, in the sweat. <laughs> but it was only a dream. It's boys and their toys, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, someone asked me, what are you doing this around? I said, but they give the, the youngsters a ride, and I'm the biggest youngster of all. <laughs> Railroader. So the railway is really important to me because, in fact, my great grandfather was actually killed in a really big train accident. So the railway has always been really important to my family. So does anyone here know if maybe they have any relatives who worked on the railway? School children are now asked to put up their hands if they've ever seen a train. The museum is a popular spot for school groups who tour the place and learn about conductors and porters and brakemen. And in Cornerbrook on the west coast, another museum. Here, the only surviving steam locomotive sits in its final resting place after chugging across the island for 36 years. This grand old steamer used to be in Southbrook Park just outside the city. And it was here that she first made CBC television back in 1962 and where we caught up with a young boy on a school outing. Now, uh, Bill, tell, tell Richard about the 1923 when we had the ice blockade. In the uh, 23, we left Port of Ass to open the road to Carnival. The whole island was blocked with ice and snow. It's a treat to hear the old folks spin tales about the railway. A bigger treat to climb up the old steam engine and play with the levers and look at the gauges that time had now laid still. From that point in time, I think uh, the day that I walked aboard the engine up there, even though I didn't know much about it then, but it seemed like it got into the blood at that time. And I think that was basically all I dreamt about until the day that I finally got, uh, got hired on as, as a brakeman back in, uh, back in 1970. 44 years later, we found that same young boy back in the cab of that same steam locomotive, still trying to figure out the equipment. Not quite sure what, what these things are here. I know one of, one of these uh, here is for reverse and forward, and some of it is, uh, some of it is the old braking system. And uh, So you didn't know what it was when you were 12 years old, and you still don't know? Still don't know. <laughs> I never really got into it, even though I, I ended up being an engineer on the trains back, uh, back in the 70s and it, uh, when I qualified, but that was all uh, diesel locomotive. And it's, this here is all st still foreign to me. 
Rich Cashin spent 18 years as a railroader, becoming an engineer in the footsteps of his father and his grandfather. And among the three generations of railroaders, they have about 120 years of service. There's always uh, this little ache in your heart somewhere and that, that you always wanted to be back on the railway and that, and, uh, and even today, and that's why I still, uh, still do a lot of talking about, uh, about railway and that and the life as a railroader and what have you. And that, that seems like once it gets in your blood, it never gets out. There's something about the railway that, that, that'll stick in your mind forever. That's, that's in my, my opinion. I was going to ask you about that. It seems to be a lot of a nostalgia attached to the railway. Very much nostalgia about the railway, that's for sure. His last train ride was special, but Mont Lingard vividly remembers the next day. A work train rolled by to pick up supplies. And the boys blew and waved to me when they went by. I was out standing on the rail there waving at them, tears coming. I couldn't even take a good picture. I had the camera and I said, no, I'm not going to get a good picture here today. And yeah, it was all over now. This is it. I'm not going to see any more trains.